Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 16. Today is our lesson number 16. 3016. 3 stands for the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 16. And we are going to work on the problems that you find on page number 166. The problems that you see on page 166 are the exact same problems that already appeared in the first and the second edition. In the event that you are interested in watching the solu original solutions from the first edition, you will find the solutions to all the problems that we are about to do from day number 53 to 56 and those problems are done at a much slower pace if that's what if that's what you prefer. Here I'm not going to explain as much, we're just going to keep on going. So let's get going. Problem number three. Problem number three, we have column A here, we have column B here, and here we have 3 raised to x plus 1, and here we have 4 raised to x, x plus 1, 4 raised to x. And the question simply is which column is bigger? But let's just plug in numbers, okay? I left out something very important. I left out something very important. It's important that you have the book in front of you. As I always remind you, you must read the problem yourself. Do not depend on, on my reading the problem to you. Because I just left out something very important. What I left out is the fact that we are told that x has to be an integer. x has to be an integer. And it has to be more than 1. Those are the two conditions we have to fulfill. It has to be a whole number, more than 1. So let's make x equal to 2. If we make x equal to 2, if we make x equal to 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, and we find that 2 plus 1 is 3, and we find that 3 cube is 27. Let's put in the same value here. Here, keep in mind, here is 4 s to x, not x plus 1. 4 s to x, x is equal to 2, so 2 squared is 16. Here we have 27, here we have 16, 27 and 16. The answer so far is A. Answer so far is A. We must qualify that thing. Now our job is to make sure that if we're going to pick A for the answer choice, it is our job now to make sure that the, whatever it is that appears in column A is always, always, always greater than what appears in column B, not just this time. And the only way we can make sure that the quantity in column A is always greater is by trying out at least one or two, or two times. Just make sure that the answer doesn't change. Let's try one more time. Let's put in x equal to 3. If we put in x equal to 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, so now it's 3 raised to 4. 3 raised to 4 is just going to be 3 times this amount which is going to be 3 raised to 4, 27 times 3 is 81, and here, x 4 raised to 3 would be 16 times 4 is 64, and that's your 4 raised to 3. Again, we have 81 versus 64, the answer is still A. Do we try one more time? I think so. I think we should try one more time. In most cases, in most cases, you'll find that by the time you try the second time, the answer switches if it is going to switch. If the answer is D, it will switch in most cases. If it doesn't, it's always safe, play safe. It's always a good idea to try one more time. Let's try one more time. I'm just going to go one more round. So, let's make x equal to 4. If x is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, we're looking for 3 raised to 5. 3 raised to 5 is going to be 81 times 3. That's going to be 3 raised to 5. Let's see what that is. 1, 3 is a 3. 8, 3 is a 24. We get 243. What do we get here? 64 times 4 will represent 4 is to 4, 4 4 is a 16, 6, carry 1, 6 4 is a 24 plus 1 is 25, 25, ah, we get 256, 243, as you can see, 256, 256 is greater than 243, it's greater. Now the answer is B, before, before the answers were A, since the answer has changed, the correct answer to this problem is D. The correct answer to this problem is D. Let's do the next one, shall we? Problem number four. Problem number four, again, it is very important, it is vital, it is crucial, it is absolutely essential that you have the book in front of you because you need to read that problem very carefully. 
if you do not pay attention to the words, how it is phrased, it will cause problems. It will make, make it difficult to understand. It says, we have three rectangles, A, B, and C. It says, the length and the width of rectangle A are 10% greater and 10% less than rectangle, respectively, than the length and width of rectangle C. So rectangle C is our point of reference. Rectangle C is our point of re reference. This is a rectangle C. Let's, let's plug in numbers here. Let's pretend it's 10, 100 by 10. 100 by 10. Or if you don't like it, make it 1000 by 100. It might make it easier to do 1000 by 100 because we're dealing with percentages here. And let's make a note of what we just read. Let's make a note of what we just read here in column A. In column A, we are told that the length, we are told that the length, length is 10% greater and the width is Length is 10% greater. We are told the length is 10% greater and width is 10% 10% less. This is rectangle, this is rectangle A. You understand? We are dealing with rectangle A. In column A, rectangle A appears. Area of rectangle A is what we are trying to figure out in column A. And we are told, one more time I'm going to read to you slowly, it says the length and the width of rectangle A are 10% greater, so the length is 10% greater, and 10% less, and the width of the, and 10% less respectively, than the length and the width of the rectangle C. So whatever the length and the width of the rectangle C is, the length is 10% greater, and the breadth is 10% less. Let's find out column B here. What do we say here, column B? In column B, again, we're going to read carefully and we're going to make note of it. It says, it goes on to say, the length and the width of rectangle B are 20% greater and 20% less. So, length here is 20% greater and the width is 20% less. If somebody who is in a hurry, they would immediately conclude that, well, if it's, it's the case that 20% here is a 10%, then obviously this quantity is going to be less than this one, because here we're only going by 10%. We can't do that. We can't do that. We're going to have to do some analysis. So let's do that. Let's draw a rectangle here. Keep in mind that the length of rectangle, this is rectangle A, the length is 10% greater than this rectangle, our point of reference. 10% of 1000 is 100, is 10% greater. So if you increase it by 10%, it becomes 1100. This is, this is your length. And the width was 100, but it is 10% less. If it's 10% less, you go from 100, 10% less, the width is 10% less, it's going to become 90. This is the width. That's the area of rectangle A. Let's look at the area, area of rectangle B. This is B, and we are told the length is 20% greater. Length is 20% greater. Before it was 1000, now it is going to become 1200. This is the length. And the width is 20% less. 20% less. Before the width was 10, 100, now it is going to become 80. This is the width. That's it, we are done. We are done. We just have to compare the two quantities. See which one is bigger. We just have to do some analysis and we are all done. We just have to do some calculation, that is. And we are all done. Let's do that, shall we? I see 90 here, I see 80 here. Let's divide both columns by 10. Let's divide both columns by 10. Zero is going to go away. I see 1100 here, I see 1200 here. Let's divide both columns by 100. If we divide both columns by 100, two zeros are going to go away. And what we end up here is 11 times 9. 11 times 9 is 99. And here we end up with 12 times 8. 12 times 8. 12 times 8. I know. 10 8s are 80. I know 10 8s are 80. If we add two more 8s, it's going to get 96. Aha! It's 96. 12 8s are 96, apparently. So we're comparing 99 versus 96. The answer is A. The answer is A. It turned out to be counterintuitive. What you might feel in the, uh, in the beginning is not the case. I thought, I was very, I was convinced throughout that it was going to turn out to be uh, equal, but obviously that's not the case here. It's 99 versus 96. And sometimes that happens where it may sound something on the surface something else, but it, that's the case here. 
the area of rectangle A is greater than the area of rectangle B after the fact that the length and the width the length of the A is increased by 10% the width is decreased by 10% and the length of B is increased by 20% and the width is decreased by 10% if that's the case area of A is going to be greater than B let's go to more let's move on to the next one let's move on to the next one this was problem number four let's move on to problem number five or rather let's go to problem number six this problem number five is a little bit complicated let's go to problem number six for the time being problem number six is very straightforward let's let's knock that out first and then we'll see how much time we have taken And problem 6 says, again read the problem to yourself, it says we have set S that consists of positive integer less than 81 that are not equal to squares of an integer. Not equal to not equal to squares of an integer. Not equal to squares of an integer equal to the not equal to squares of an integer is same as saying the same as saying not perfect squares so we're looking for all the numbers that are not perfect squares and are less than 81 well obviously less not perfect squares less than less than 81 that's your set s there is column A, there is column B, and in column B we have how many are there? It says number of integers in set S. So how many are there? Number of integers in set S versus 72. Well here's the thing, if we sit here and try to make a list of all the numbers that are not perfect squares less than 81 will be here forever. The quickest, the simplest, the most economical way here is to first figure out all the perfect squares. We figure out how many perfect squares are there and we're just going to subtract from 81 and we'll have the answer. So let's make a list of all the perfect square. One square is one, two square, three square, so on and so forth. We have four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, thirty-six, forty-nine, 64 that's 8 squared so far we have 8 squared and 9 squares is 81 but we are told they have to be less than 81 they have to be less than 81 we cannot count 81 81 does not count so there are only 8 there are only 8 and they have to be less than 81 if they have to be less than 81 altogether there were 100 uh, altogether there are 80 rather, 80 from, from, from 1 to 80 is 80, 80 integers, from 1 to 80 there are 80 integers out of which we just found out that 8 of them, you see we stop at 8 squared, 9 squared does not count, we stop at 8 squared, 8 of them, 8 of them are perfect squares, if 8 of them are perfect squares, how many of them are not perfect squares which have to be less, which happen to be less than 81, the answer is very straightforward, they must be 72 integers that happen to be less than 81 and not and and are not perfect squares there are 72 integers one more time there are 72 integers apparently that are less than 81 and are not and are not perfect squares and 72 is exactly what we see in the other column the answer is c so this was quite straightforward Just give me one brief second. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. Let's do the next problem. Let's do the next problem. Next problem, as I said, is a little tricky. Problem number five. In problem number five, in problem number five, We are told that we have a variable x which is which has a normal distribution which has a normal distribution it's normally distributed we are told 
we are told that 650 represents the 60th percentile. 60th percentile. And we are told that 850 represents 90th percentile. Just like in the GRE, just like in the GRE, when you take the exam, it is not the score that you get that matters. It is not the score that is as important. What, impo what is more important is, is what percentile do you fall into. So in this exam, whatever the perfect score happens to be in this exam, if it turns out that somebody had 850 in this exam, they're in the 90th percentile, meaning there are only 10% of people who scored more than 850. Or if you put it the other way around, if you scored 850, then 90% of people who took this exam scored below you did. And similarly, if you scored 650, then it turns out 60% of the people were lower than you and 40% of the people scored above you. The question here is, what's, what's the value? A bit of, I don't want to end up taking too much room here. Let's put it here. Value of 75th percentile, 75th percentile, that's our column A, and in column B, we have 750. Okay, watch what happens. So what most people might end up thinking, what most people end up thinking here, is that, I'm looking at my pointer, is that if 650 represents if 650 represents 60th percentile and 850 represents 90th percentile, 90th percentile, 60th percentile, 90th percentile, and since they're looking for the value of 750, they want us to find the value of the 75th percentile versus 750. Well, 750 fits falls right in the middle, 650 to 750, that's right in the middle, right here. And since this is since this is 60th percentile and this is 90th percentile, the average of 60 and 90 is 75th percentile right here. Right in the middle, which is 70, 750. 650, 750, 850, this is 150 apart, this is 150 apart. And we are going, since the 60th percentile, the 90th percentile, this is right in the middle, so people who do not quite understand what it means for it to be normally distributed might think that these two are equal. But that is not the case. It is not the case because, this is the punchline, this is not the case because this assumes, this assumes that the area looks like this. Because it is the area of the normal distribution that determines what percentage of the observations have fallen below or above certain category, certain number that is. The Roma distribution does not look like this. It is not, this is evenly distributed. This is evenly distributed. Going from here to here is increasing by 100 and therefore percentile goes up from 7, 68th percentile to 75th percentile, increase of 15th percentile. It, it, look, it looks, looks like if you, if you, if you go, if, if you get 100 more points, it will jump by 50th percentile. If you get another 100 points from 750 to 850, it's going to jump by another 15 percentile. It is not normally, it's, it's not evenly distributed. The normal distribution looks something like this. We are done with this thing. Make sure you understand this part. The, the, it is not a rectangle. It, it, it is not a perfect rectangle. The area that falls under, the area that falls from 60th percentile to 90th percentile, listen very carefully, the area that falls un, under, the normal, under the normal curve from 60th percentile to 90th percentile does not look like this. It's not a, it's not a rectangle. It looks something like this. This is the 50th percentile. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop writing percentile. You understand? It's too much. That's the 50th percentile, which means half the people scored below it. And we are told. Well, let's first talk about. Let's first talk about the actual looks of it. And we know if we go one one standard deviation. This is our mean. The mean minus one standard deviation. This is this score right here. Whatever that mean happens. We're not. We're not talking about any of this here. This is just a review. And the mean plus one standard deviation, we capture other, uh, other 
34% of the 34% of the of the observation. And we know that from the mean, if you go one up one one standard deviation from the mean, if we go one standard deviation above it or one standard deviation below it, we have we have captured 68% of the observations. Two thirds of all the observations fall there. And if you go one more, one more, one more standard deviation. As you can clearly see, as you can clearly see, that moving one standard deviation below the mean captures 34% of the observation, but moving one more standard deviation, it does not capture another 34%. It couldn't possibly be, because there is only 100%. It only captures 14%. And similarly, moving one standard deviation above the mean captures this area under the curve. Think of the whole area under the curve as one, one being 100%. And this area, this area is 0.34. But this area right here is only 0.14. It's only 14%. Why is that? It's like that because it's not, it's not, a, it's not a rectangle. It's not, it's not evenly distributed. Now let's see where, where we fall. We, we can erase all of this thing here. Actually, just let's leave it here. Let's, with a different marker, let's see what happens here. Okay, listen very carefully. We are told that 60th percentile, 60th percentile is 650. This is 50th percentile. Okay, this is 50th percentile. What percentile is this? Well, if this is, if you if you score mean, 50% of the people have scored below you. If you score mean plus one standard deviation. You are at now 50 plus 34. This is the 84 percentile. 84 percentile. 90th percentile. 90th percentile is going to be slightly above that. So let's put it right here. This is your 90th percentile, and that we are told is the score of 850. Because remember, 14 plus 14 is 28. So. 34, 34 is 68, plus 28, we have 96, we have 96% of the observation, 96% of the observations fall between the two standard deviation from the mean, this is your mean, two standard deviation this way to the right, two standard deviation this way, and from here to here, you have captured 96% of the observation, 2% are in this tail, and 2% of the observations are going to fall this tail. 850 is right here and that represents one more time how did we arrive at that how did we arrive at that because this is 50th percentile mean plus one standard deviation would be 50 plus 34 it's 84 percentile these are all approximate that's good enough so 90th percentile is going to fall here 850 you with me let's look at the 60th percentile 60th this is 50th percentile from here to here is 84 percentile 60th percentile is going to be somewhere here This is your 60th percentile, and that's a score of 650. Okay, stay with me. Now I'm going to erase. Uh, now I'm going to erase all the other stuff that we do not need. Okay, so that so that it doesn't get too crowded. I'm going to erase all of this other stuff that we do not need. Well, and the score of 750 is going to be. This is 850. This is this is 650, not 850, this is 650, and this is 850, somewhere around here, it's going to be 850 right here, 750 right here, what percentile is that going to be, this is, is that going to be, is that going to be 75th percentile? The answer is no. Answer is no. 75th percentile. Let me redraw it. Let me redraw this. It's getting too crowded. I made it. I made it far too complicated. I made it far too complicated. Let me just let me just do the problem. Instead of instead of turning into a lecture of normal distribution, let me just do the problem. This is 50th percentile. We are told that 850 is 90th percentile. 90th percentile way over there, somewhere here. And that's the score of 850. 60th percentile is going to be somewhere here. 
and that's the score of seven. That's the score of that's the score of six fifty. Seven fifty is right here. And by the time you do seven fifty, by the time you do seven fifty, this is what you have to understand. Okay, I better too much fast, and I don't want to re I'm not, I don't want to redo the, this video, <coughs> so I'm just going to continue with it here. Which is your, which is why you're watching. This is what you have to understand. This area. This area is a very simple concept. This area is far greater when we go from 650 to 750. A lot more people fall in this area. A greater percentage of people fall between 650 and 750 than the number of people, than the number of people that are going to fall in. How can I do this thing? In this area. This is a much smaller area. This is a much smaller area. As you can clearly see, far fewer people are going to fall in this, this a smaller percentage of people, in other words, a smaller percentage of the people is from 750 to 850 than the number of people who are going to fall between 650 and 750. Therefore, the value of the 75th percentile is going to be somewhere here, 75th percentile is here somewhere. By the time you get to 750, you're far above 75th percentile because there are more people in this area. This is 75th percentile right here. In other words, if you want to make sure that you score more than 75% of the population, you don't have to score 750. 750 will take you above 75th percentile. So the value of the 75th percentile, whatever that is, is less than 750. The answer here is A. Oh, sorry, answer here is this quantity is less. Yes, 750 is greater. The answer is B. The answer is B. Do you understand? That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.